OCR statistics by Variate Data 1 scatter diagrams. This is video 1.5, which is on hypothesis testing using the PMCC. In the previous video, we discussed Pearson's product moment correlation coefficient and that it was a measure of the linear correlation between two variables. What we're interested now is, is that correlation statistically significant. And in order to find that out, we need to do something called a hypothesis test. It's only appropriate to use a hypothesis test on the PMCC when the data is drawn from a bivariate normal distribution. And what this means is when you look at the scatter diagram, it's roughly elliptical. What that means is the data is concentrated roughly in the middle of an elliptical grouping on the scatter diagram. When you perform a hypothesis test on the PMCC, you need to have a null hypothesis, which we write as H0. And you can either write it like this, H0 is that there is no correlation between and that is whatever two variables that you have or you could also write that h0 is that rho is equal to 0. Now remember rho stands for the population. We also need to have an alternative hypothesis and this depends on what we're testing for. So if we're testing for any association, we could be performing a two-tailed test or a two-sided test. And that means it's either positive or negative. We don't know which. So we would write that H1 is that there is some correlation again between whatever the two variables are or again we could write it using rho we could say that rho is not equal to zero if we were testing for a positive correlation this would be a one-tailed test because we know the direction and we could say that either the alternative hypothesis is that there is positive correlation between our two variables or we could say that our alternative hypothesis is that rho is greater than zero because it's positive or we could be testing for negative correlation and we would say that our alternative hypothesis is that there's negative correlation. Between our two variables. Or we could write that our alternative hypothesis is that rho is less than zero. We need a test statistic and the test statistic is the sample product moment correlation coefficient that we can calculate. So we can either do this using a calculator or we can do it using the formula. So the formula is that R is equal to S X Y over the square root of S X X times s y y and we showed you how to calculate this in the previous video 1.4 the other thing you need to be able to conduct a hypothesis test is something called a critical value and these are given to you in the formula booklet now just be careful that you do look at the right one because there's also one for Spearman's so make sure it says product moment correlation coefficient and it has R here. So just a few things to point out. 
Well now you need to know which kind of test you're doing, a two-tailed or a one-tailed test. You also need to know the significance levels, that's what these are here. Um, here you can see that this would be the sample size. So N is the sample size. You just looked down to the appropriate row that you're interested in. Let's go through an example to make sense of this. The following table contains the height and mass of eight male year 10 students. So you can see, first of all, that we know that the sample size in this case is eight. We're asked to carry out a hypothesis test on Pearson's product moment correlation coefficient at the 5% level. So this is the significance level. And we're asked to investigate for correlation between height and mass. We aren't told which direction to go, so this is a two-tailed test. Okay, to start off, what we need to do always is write down our null hypothesis. So I'm going to write H0 is that rho is equal to 0. And my alternative hypothesis is that rho is not equal to 0. And that's because we're doing a two-tailed test. We have the raw data here, so you'd be able to use your calculator in order to find R. And R is what we call our test statistic. So our test statistic is that R is, and if you calculate this, you will get that R is 0 0.7880, and that's to four decimal places. Now, we need to find our critical value using the table to compare this to. So here, we know that we're doing a two-tailed test, so we're only interested in that row. We've been told that it's the 5% level and we also know that our sample size is 8. So if we read across, we can see that the critical value is 0 0.7067. It's much simpler to make sense of critical regions by using a number line. So let's first plot our critical value that we've just got from the table. That was 0 0.7067, and it roughly goes somewhere here. So let's say that that's our critical value. Now remember, this is a two-tailed test, and the table only gives positive values. So we would need to also put a critical value down here, which was minus 0 0.7067. This is what we would call our insignificant region. So this is where R is 0, and we have our null hypothesis as well. So we're going to call this our insignificant region. The end parts here are what we would call our critical regions. So this is critical to the end. And this is also critical as well. So we worked out that our test statistic, remember that R was equal to 0 0.7880, which would go roughly somewhere here. Okay, so this is R is equal to 7, 0 0.7880. And you can see that this is clearly lying in what we call the critical region. Okay, so let's just go through exactly how you would need to set it out in your solution. Remember, you need to state what your null hypothesis is, in this case that there's no correlation between the height and mass of the students. And then our alternative hy hypothesis is that there is some correlation between the height and mass. Our test statistic was 0 0.7880. Our critical value was 0 0.7067 and 0 0.7880 is greater than 0 0.7067 and therefore it's in the critical region so we reject the null hypothesis 
and we need to accept the alternative hypothesis. So we need to have a, a, a sentence at the end that makes this clear. So we're going to say there is significant evidence at the 5% level to suggest that there is correlation between the height and mass of male year 13 students. Notice we're saying st significant evidence here. We're not actually saying that it, it, we definitely know it is so, but we have enough evidence to believe that it might be. This was the final video in this section 1.5, which is on hypothesis testing using the PMCC.